Hi people, we are going to look at a problem that has to do with uh, free fall. So this one falls under the topic classical mechanics. So when we are done with all this, bam, it should be good to work out every problem that has to do with classical mechanics. So let's take a look at this one. The saying, a stone is thrown with an initial velocity. So in physics, it's very important for you to develop the art of jotting down data. So you're saying data. What you've been given is initial velocity, which is equal to 20 meters per second. Air resistance is ignored. And then G is equal to 10. That's the pull of gravity. And then they're saying, how far does it take to reach the top? So now here we are, look we are looking at a free falling object, free fall, which is a free fall. Uh, so it, it's thrown from the bottom here, it's thrown upwards with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. The question is, what will be the final velocity when it reaches the topmost of its journey? Because the moment it reaches here, it will actually stop moving, meaning its final velocity will actually equal to zero. Now, the other thing that you have to put it into consideration here is the movement of the, the particle that has been thrown with respect to gravity. So now, since the pull of gravity is in this direction, and it's moving against the pull of gravity, then G becomes negative 10. That is, the pull of gravity becomes negative. But in a case where it's dropped from, the, from above that, and it's released, then the pull of gravity is positive because that particle will be moving towards the pull of gravity. So those are things that you have to put into consideration. Okay, so we have the pull of gravity, we have initial velocity, we also have final velocity. So now the question is, how far does it take? So now when they say how far, they're actually asking you to determine the height or the distance that it had covered. But in this case, we're dealing with height because it moved from this point going upwards. So height is equal to, that's what we want to resolve here. Okay. So since no time has been given here, we have to make use of this equation. We say final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared, which is equal to oh, plus, not which is equal to, that's plus, two times the pull of gravity times the height. Uh, so now, what we're going to write here are the values of these quantities. So final velocity, that is a zero. Initial velocity, that's 20 squared plus two times the pull of gravity is negative 10 times the height. So 20 squared, what you get when you multiply 20 by 20, that's a 400. So we're gonna have a 400 on one end of the equation. Oh, this one will be a zero. That's zero squared here, almost forgot. Zero squared, that's a zero, which is equal to 400. Then plus two times negative 10, that's actually negative 10 h so we collect the like terms you can't add this to because these are not like terms so the 400 will go that size so we're gonna have a 400 which is equal to negative 10 h so this one will become negative we now need to get rid of negative 10 by dividing it both sides of the equation. So this side and this side, those will cancel. We're going to have H. 
which is equal to negative and negative will cancel, zero and zero will cancel. So you're going to have remain with 40, 40 meters. So the distance that was covered from wherever it was thrown from going upwards till it reached the apex of the journey was actually 40 meters. So it went as far as 40 meters. So let me record this somewhere here. So height is equal to 40 meters. Let's move on to number two. You've, uh, we've resolved the first question. Let's move on to number two. What is it that they want us to resolve? Saying, how long does it take to reach the top? So in this case, they want us to determine time. If, if this particle is thrown from the bottom, and then it covered 40 meters all the way from the bottom to the top. The question now is, uh, what time did it take to move from the bottom to the top? Uh, so that was, that's what we're going to figure out. So we say final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus the pull of gravity times time. So we can now collect the values. We, we had them, but I will still write them here. So final velocity is zero. The moment this particle reaches uh, the top here, it will stop moving. So the final velocity will be zero. Initial velocity is the one that uh, we've been given here, which is 20. Okay, so the pull of gravity had been given to say, since it's, it's, it's moving upwards, and it's moving against the pull of gravity then, G will equal to negative 10. So we can now plug them in this equation here. So final velocity is zero, which is equal to initial velocity, which is 20. Then G, that's negative 10, T. So this 20 will go this side. So we are going to have a 20, which is equal to negative 10, T. We can now resolve this. This one is negative 20. I wonder why I keep on forgetting the negative sign. So, yeah. So, we have negative 20 here. So, we get rid of a negative 10 by dividing it both sides of the equation. So we have this one and that one cancelling. Of t is equal to negative and negative cancelled 0 and 0 out. So, we're going to have 2 seconds. So, I will write the answer here. B the time it took to move from the bottom to the top was actually two seconds, covering 40 meters. It was moving at a great speed, huh? Okay, let's now work out the next problem. They say, what is its velocity just before reaching the ground? So here you have to be considerate of the direction of motion. So it's starting from here, and we want to determine the final velocity. I was saying, this time around, final velocity isn't known. But we know <clears throat> the initial velocity. The initial velocity at this point, since it had stopped, so it had zero speed. So initial velocity is actually zero. And then the pull of gravity is equal to, the pull of gravity is equal to, <sighs> positive 10 since it's moving in direction to the pull of gravity. So now, what formula are we going to make use of? Oh yeah, we can say final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus two times the pull of gravity times height. So since we know 
we, don't, we know initial velocity, we also know the pole gravity as well as the height. You can plug them in as if v squared is equal to initial velocity is zero squared plus two times the pole of gravity, which is a 10 times height. What's the height? That's the one that we found there, which is equal to 40. Excuse me, boss. Okay. So we, we are going to have V squared, which is equal to zero squared is zero squared. So we, we're going to consider these, which are the far end. That'll be 10, two times 10, two times 10 times uh, 40. That is 800. Okay, so now, since we have squared here and we need V not V squared, you're going to square root both sides. So V is equal to, now the question is, what's the square root of 800? So that's 28.28. 28.28 meters per second. That's the answer there. How about the last question now? They're saying, how long does it take to reach the ground? So what you need to know is from here to, to the top here, it took, it took two seconds. That's the time we found here. And then going down again, it will take two seconds. So time will, will equal to two times the initial time. So time is equal to four Excuse seconds. Me, you have a text that is the time it took to move from the bottom here to the top and then getting back to the bottom. Four seconds. So that's how we answer such questions as this.